Functions are oftentimes referred to as the greatest integer function, and it can be represented by this symbol here, okay, or this symbol here. Notice the little bars at the bottom, sometimes called a floor function, okay. And basically, what a greatest integer function does is it rounds down to the next greatest integer. So, I'll show you an example. Like, say, for example, we wanted to simplify uh, 2.5, okay. Well, if you think of the number line, like here's, a, here's two right here and here's three right here, right? 2.5 is right about in the middle, right? So when we round down, we're rounding to two. So this is gonna equal two. That's the next integer you know, below. Now, if you wanted to uh, figure out what this is, let's say the greatest integer of, let's say, uh, one, well, this would just still be one, okay? So it just rounds down to the next integer. But if it's already an integer, it's gonna stay that value. Now say for example, it was like a negative value. This is where students sometimes uh, go off the track, so to speak. Negative 4.5, so if we look at a number line here, okay, here's negative 4.5, well here's negative four, here's negative three, here's negative five, and here's zero way over here, right? So negative 4.5 is right about here, but notice we're rounding down, rounding down, we're rounding to the left. So you always round to the left on the number line. So this is actually negative five. So are you with me so far? It looks like the number is getting larger. And you said, hey, wait a second, Mario, you said that we round down. Well, you are rounding down. Negative five is actually smaller than negative 4.5 because it's further to the left on the number line. Okay, so are you with me so far? Okay, so the next thing is we're gonna talk about how to graph these step functions. The first thing I would recommend doing is let's just make a table of values. So what I'll do is make a little table I'm gonna pick some integer values, like zero, that's gonna round down to zero. 0.5, that rounds down to zero. 0.99, still zero. One is gonna be one. Okay, 1 1.5, we round down to one. 1 1.999, we round down to one. But two, we're gonna be at two. Okay, and so on. So if we plot these points, okay, let's see if we can draw this here. One, two, three, okay. You can see 0, 0, that's gonna be right here, 0, 0. 0.5 is gonna be right here, 0. 0.99, that's 0. But as soon as we get to 1, okay, we jump up to 1. See, this is the point one, one. So what we have here is we have a step. So you can see where it's, you know, where the step function name comes from, okay? So you go up to here, you jump up to 1. 1. 1.5, you're gonna be at 1. 1. 1.99, you're gonna be at 1. At 2, there's an open circle here, right? Because it jumps up to the next integer, okay? So that's the next stair. And once you get a few of these stairs or steps going, you can repeat the process, okay, you know, like so, both directions. All right, so you're with me so far? Now this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Notice like right here, it's open here, closed here, so it's only crossing the graph at one point. So this is how you graph the basic graph. Now I just want to show you how to do a couple transformations. Uh, of this function here. So say you wanted to graph y equals two, okay, like this, two times. What do you think this two does to the graph? Well, if you said that it stretches it vertically by two times, you're absolutely right. So basically what this is gonna happen now is instead of these stairs being going up one each time, they're gonna go up two. Okay, so if I could sketch that, let's see, I'll put it right down here. It's gonna look something like this now you're gonna jump up to two, then you're gonna jump up to four, okay, and here you're gonna jump down to negative two, so it's a vertical stretch by two, so we're multiplying all the y values by two. Now what would happen, do you think, if I put the two grouped, okay, with the x? Well, if you said that it's gonna be a horizontal compression, you're absolutely right. The thing to remember is that when it's grouped with the x, it has the opposite effect. Okay, so for another example, like say for example we have x minus two. You see the minus two and you might naturally think, well minus two means left two, right? But when it's grouped with the x, it has the opposite effect. This is actually gonna shift the graph right two. So you're gonna pick the graph up, okay, this graph here, pick it up, and you're gonna sh shift it two units to the right. Whereas this one here, uh, we're just gonna multiply all the x's by one half. And so what's gonna happen is it's gonna compress it horizontally. So these stairs are actually just gonna be Let's see if I can sketch that here for you. They're just gonna be like half, then it's gonna jump up to the next one, okay, like that. So basically it's compressing this way. So I hope this helped you to understand how to 
uh, graph the step functions, okay, also known as the greatest integer function. Uh, take a look at some of these examples here, and I'll also have a video that uh, talks about uh, the different transformations that we're talking about here if you want to learn more about that, and I can put a link for that for you. So subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos on Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.